Hey, brothers and sisters. It's Brother Bear here. It's been a long time. I know, look, big trucks coming down this road. Um, I'm in my truck. I've got to do some work on my wife's car. But I just wanted to talk to you guys real quick. You know, I had a dream a while back. And I want everyone that's listening to this to uh, listen to these scriptures. The, I, I had a dream that I saw three men and they were talking about the Bible and about what was best and what was not best and you know which which scriptures were best and which verses were best, what chapters. And they finally came to the conclusion that uh, First Peter was the best um, book for this time. So this is where my son lives. This is where I used to live in the garage. So anyway, I live in the mountains as you can see. Somebody's got a lot of money. This guy put up a big fence right here. So anyway, what I'd like you to do is listen to that. I don't know, three or four times you can you can listen to it. Uh, Max McLean does a real good rendition. You can put it on your phone or computer at home and you can play it and um, it will uh, you can play it over and over again on your computer or your phone listen to it like three or four times it's really good and it'll bless your heart I want you guys to also remember to pray for brother Dave Hung he's the guy that has a like a ministry for people that are on the street and stuff and he's in the hospital he's been in there for a while quite a while I've been praying for him myself um, I did a 14 day fast a little while ago and uh, get my son's mail real quick and uh, anyway I haven't really heard much from the Lord we know this COVID thing is, is part of you know nothing can happen in this world without God being involved in it and that's where we can have peace you know this is what the Lord has really been showing me look there's a bunch of quail up here in the road see him crossing the road there's the mama and the daddy maybe anyway um, the Lord is really you know, if you listen to what Peter's talking about, the trying of your faith, and I've really been going through the mill here lately, you know, in the beginning, back in 2011, when the Lord first spoke to me, um, I had, uh, I had um, this wonderful experience with the Lord for years. You know, the first two years were great. I mean, every day I woke up, I didn't even have any pain in my body. It was unbelievable. And so, anyway, things are a lot different now. I'm almost getting close to 63 years old. And it's been, it'll be 10 years in February of 21. So it's not that far from now. But really what I want you guys to know that no matter what happens you know in your life no matter what it's what's you know this situation that happens to us that's life I want you to know that it, there's one thing that we have that's always going to be steadfast that's always going to um, bring you joy and bring you power and that is the word of God God's word never fails and I know there are people, and I've even said this myself, you know, there are, are different interpretations. Um, you know, we went round and round. People have about what God, you know, His Word and how accurate. But I've really been doing a lot of studying, you know, and they've been finding some amazing things out, you know, about people that lived in the past and how true the Bible really is. So, I'm going to put a cover on my cooler back here before it disintegrates. It's out in the sun. I had a bag over it, and then now it's the bag is falling apart. So, 
and I've got to do my wife, the brakes on my wife's car. They want like $400 to do a set of brakes. Thank God I still have, I can still do stuff like that. So, anyway, you know, what I really wanted to say was, brothers and sisters, we can trust the Lord. The Lord never fails. This is where I used to live inside this garage right here. Four years I lived in there. So, you know, if we if we let ourselves be humble and if we really search the oh Lord, see there's my cooler. <laughs> Things fall apart. So, you know, if we really seek the Lord's face and we begin to, you know, humble ourselves and pray, you know, God will take care of us. He will. And no matter what happens, I mean, with men, like you hear a lot of times that certain certain preacher did this terrible thing and, and it offended so-and-so and all this stuff. So, you know, what I always go back to is the Word of God. And what the Word of God is, is it's always, it's always steadfast and accurate. We can trust on the Word of the Lord. So read or play with John McClain this, this thing with Peter, 1 Peter, and maybe even 2 Peter, you know, and another great uh, thing to listen to over and over again is Romans and Hebrews and Colossians. The, the gospel is so, it's so good. It's so full of wonderful things. I know you guys are just looking at a doorway. You're not looking at my face. I'll show you my face. But first, let's look in here. This is where I lived all that time. There's my little gun safe over there. So, here I am. Anyway, I want to pray with you guys. And maybe I can do a Bible study with you later. I'm sorry I haven't been on here. Um, some really bad stuff, things happened to me back in 2012. And it's just been, it was earth shattering what I learned. And it was, it's like one of the hardest things to overcome this thing because it affects every aspect of my life for the last 42 years, 43 years. So, uh, I want you guys to know that the Lord loves you and that He cares for you. And that if we lean on Him, you know, there's been a lot of debate here about repentance and what repentance means. Maybe I should do a little study on that. I've been doing a lot of research on that because there's some Christians saying, well, once you repent, you don't ever have to repent again, and things like that. But if you really look up what repentance is and you follow it through the scriptures, you'll find that it means exactly that, that we need to come to the Lord daily. And that doesn't mean say you miss something, say, you know, like there are people that get killed and they may say, accidentally say a cuss word or something as they're dying, or, you know, you may miss something. I'm not talking about we re repent of every single sin. And if you don't, you're not going to make it. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying the blood of Christ continually washes us from all of our sins. And what we have to do is, you know, what I do, this is what I do. I come to the Lord and I ask him for forgiveness. And there are things that I struggle with. You know, a lot of people struggle with all kinds of things. Well, I have things also that I struggle with. And and I have to come to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me, I've done this again. Or, you know, I had anger in my heart. Or I had unbelief. Or I had, you know, mo when, when Abraham became this great man of God, he did it by faith. He believed. The Word of God tells us that he was justified by this belief that he had and of course, you know, people are going to try to say, well, why do you have to repent? <laughs> Jesus Christ said it. He even said it in the book of the Revelation. To repent and redo the works that you did. Again, why? Why is he saying that? 
So for myself, you know, and there, this is the thing, there are all these ongoing fightings. And why would somebody try to take the Bible and try to prove that you don't have to even repent ever again once you've been saved? I'm not talking about losing your salvation or anything like that, even though there are scriptures that tend to lean that way, that you can, and the Lord told me in a dream when when I first, no, he actually spoke this to me when I was in the car. I was backslidden for 17 years, and the Lord began to deal with me about the sin that was in my life, and that I was not serving him and stuff like that. And I began to hear a voice because I didn't repent immediately, right? My brother and I were in his car. We were doing a radio show that we'd been doing for about a year. And um, the Lord spoke to me and told me, stop what you're doing. Repent. I am coming soon. Get your house in order. Okay, I hadn't been inside a church in 17 years. Maybe once or twice in between, but I mean, I was not serving the Lord and I didn't pick up my Bible. I didn't even know where my Bible was. I hadn't prayed to God. My daughter even got in a car in an accident on a motorcycle and she was she was unconscious. She couldn't remember things. She was in bad shape. I didn't pray then either, I don't think. <laughs> I was so messed up because of the thing that the aliens told me. And so here's the thing. I didn't repent that night. I did stop what I was doing. I was just totally blown away. That was God's voice. When you have actually heard God's voice, not your conscience talking to you, not your own mind speaking to you, and when you really hear God speak to you, you'll know, oh, that's Him. I know His voice. And so this is different than that little voice in your head that says, oh, don't eat an extra cookie. You don't need that ice cream. Or... Don't steal that or don't take too much time on your lunch break or your your break mid-morning break at work. Don't steal a few minutes. It's not that voice. It's a definite God Almighty speaking to you voice. And that voice spoke to me and told me, stop what you're doing and repent. Now, if I didn't need to repent, why would he say that? And then the other thing is, I didn't do that that night. I went, I went inside, told my brother... You know, you're going to have to go home. I don't feel good. And so he went home. And then the next day I was getting ready to take my shower. And this voice started talking to me again and kept telling me, you know, oh, it's, did you hear about that? That's a shame that Gary was one of the ones that went to hell. The Bible never says we're unborn or we're not born. We're not a son anymore and all that. We're, if you look at the prodigal son, the prodigal son left. He spent all of his stuff. The father still loved him and wanted him, but that prodigal son had a choice. You see, he was out there in the pig pen, in the slop, eating the pig's food. And then it came to him, it, he realized it in his head, that, hey, even my servants, even the servants at my father's house are doing better than me. They have it better than this. So what did he do? He turned around and came back to his father. Now, if he would have chose, he could have died right there in that pig slop. You see? So that's the way I look at it. And God began to tell me this way back then. He said, he kept saying, every day, you know, I wouldn't repent. I didn't repent that first day or the second day. The third day, he was talking about me going to hell. And then that's when I repented. So I don't know, you know, all these people want to say all this stuff and they want to pick, cherry pick out of the Bible certain scriptures and try to say this is true or that is true. Read 1 John. He's talking to Christians, John is. So I don't know, man, but I, this is the thing. I would not want my, my salvation to be dependent on somebody else's word. You know, what I believe in. You know, and you get there and you go, oh, wow, but so-and-so said this, and they used these scriptures, and it proved that, you know, I can do anything because Paul said, you know, nothing's illegal, so I could just do it all, right? I don't think that's what Paul was talking about. He's talking about the law and eating pig meat or pork bellies, which are really good. I, I, have, a, I have a pit boss smoker, and I smoke some 
pork belly in there and it made burnt ends on it. Oh, so tasty. Anyway, I don't want to tell anybody what to do, but you need to read the Bible and let God guide you. You better let the Holy Spirit deal with your heart and all this stuff. Because if you're wrong, you see, there's some dire consequences. Look at the angels. It talks about he didn't even spare them. Huh. And they came to him and they wanted to repent. If you look in the book of Enoch, they wanted to do so. Oh, hey, oh no, we made a mistake. So, look, I love you guys. I want people to be to be going before the Lord and asking Him to keep them sanctified. I know it's not us. I know that we have no power, but we have something that we have to do as Christians. We have to put in our own two cents worth. You know, this isn't just a free ride that you, you get. You ask the Lord to forgive you whenever you're 12 years old, and it's all good from then no matter what you do. It's just your place in the kingdom, maybe, or something people want to say. And there's a lot of nonsense going on. You know, Comet Neowise is in the sky. You can go out and see it. I don't know if it's dropped below the horizon yet, but there's a lot of things happening this year, and maybe the Lord will return this year. I don't know. He hasn't told me. The only thing he's told me is that the things that he has said to me that we're actually him. Those things will come to pass. So look up, man. Our salvation is closer today than when we began. And you can have joy in your heart if you'll just stick to the scriptures, if you'll dive into God's word, if you'll hide yourself, if you'll rest inside Christ, inside his word, if you'll dig deep into God's word and there's jets flying over here just all day long, every day just about. F-22s, F-35s, F-A-18 Super Hornets. I don't know what they're doing. The other day I saw one carrying what looked to me like a... The, they've got this new... I think it's an AGM-183. It's a air-launched uh, hypersonic missile. It's what it looked like underneath the wing. So... Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, my brothers and sisters and I come before your throne and we ask that you would bring the Holy Spirit upon us and that that Holy Spirit would lead us into all truth and righteousness. God, we ask, Father, in the mighty name of your Holy Son that you'd undertake for Pastor Dave. God, he's in the hospital and he's very sick. God, that your hand would be upon him to protect him and guide him and keep him. God Almighty, we love you and we thank you for all that you've done for us. God, we thank you that we live in a country that allows us to read the Bible. In China, they're destroying churches and attacking Christians and pastors. Same thing in Russia, God. We ask that you'd move in the lives of those people in China and Russia. The lives of the people that are in the Middle East that are under the lie of Islam. God, we ask that you'd open their eyes Father, that they could see Jesus Christ and be saved. We ask that you'd undertake for our president, for President Donald Trump and, and Pence, God, that you'd undertake for them, God, in this time of trouble in this country, God, that you'd strengthen them and that you'd lead them into true salvation, God. I know Mike Pence loves you, and I know Donald Trump has made a confession, so God Almighty, we ask that you'd lead him as a new babe in Christ into you and to the truth of all that you have to say, God Almighty. We ask that you'd block the enemy's work, God. And Father God, we ask that you'd undertake for the people in Israel. Oh, Lord God, God, that you'd move in Israel, Almighty God, that you'd move in Israel that you'd lay your hands upon Netanyahu and upon your people there, God, because there are promises that you made Abraham that shall not fail, God. They shall come to pass. Father, we are waiting upon it. Even as Abraham 
which most people don't know, Abraham waited about 25 years for his son to be born. It was a promise. He waited patiently, doing what he was asked to do over and over again, God, until finally they had a child, God. Years and years later, Abraham was very, very old, and his wife was in her 90s, God. So help, Father God, undertake for this situation in Israel and the promises that you've laid out. For your people, God, we ask that you'd bless them and that you'd bring peace to Jerusalem, God, even as you said in your word to pray for peace. God Almighty, we ask this in the mighty name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. We ask that you'd undertake for my brothers and sisters that are watching this video, God, that they'd be able to spread the word, that they'd bring, be able to bring joy, because we know, God, that the only truth, the only rock there really is, is your holy word. And we can stand on that, no, no matter what happens or what things look like, that you're there, God, that you're moving. So we ask this in the mighty name of your Son, God. We glorify your name. We praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord God. Blessed be your name. And if there are any of those that are not saved that are watching this video, God, we ask them to search their hearts, to take a knee and ask that their sins be forgiven and that they be allowed to be a son in your kingdom, that they would believe that you forgive them of their sins if they repent. God, and they would come to you. All you've got to do is say, Almighty God, if you really exist, I am sorry for my sins and I ask that you and your Son and the Holy Spirit come and live inside me and lead me and guide me into all truth and righteousness. And then begin to read God's word and get baptized if you can. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we say these things. Amen.